Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to the Recovering Fundamentalist podcast. We're back. We're back. <laughs> we are back. <laughs> Boys, I've missed you. I really have. Yeah, I've missed doing these, and uh, I'm, I'm glad we're back. And you know what? I think we've got a lot of uh, pent-up angst to, <laughs> to get out today. <laughs> this might be potentially the most controversial episode we've done to date. Well, you know, Ooh. when we decided on the subject, <laughs> Nathan, you wouldn't know this because you're not on the tickety talk. <laughs> but the moment we decided to do this episode, I immediately started hearing that little song, Into the Thick of It, Into the Thick of It. <laughs> That's all I could hear in my mind over and over oh, again. Oh, boy. We're just, I mean, we're, jump, we're jumping right in. It's going to be exciting. I can't wait. Let's get it started. What do you say? I'm just waiting on Brian to finish that watermelon shake from cookout. <laughs> well, pretty soon you won't have to see me eat any more of these because they Go only away. have them for July and August. And it's so sad. But guess what is coming? Pumpkin spice. Pumpkin spice latte. Oh, man. Every, <laughs> every year. I don't like pumpkin spice. Remember, I just like the pumpkin spice free life soap. Mm, gotcha. Controversial, boys. Y'all ready? Let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's go. The Recovering Fundamentalist Podcast begins in three. These podcasts, <laughs> podcasts, that sounds like a convention of beans or peas to me. I podcast. Listen, and these recovering fundamentalists, they don't know the Bible either. What are the fundamentals? Inerrancy, virgin birth of Jesus Christ, Amen. substitutionary atonement, Amen. bodily resurrection Amen. of Christ, and the authenticity of miracles. Hi, man. Two. I am not a recovering fundamentalist. They're everywhere. They're all over the internet. They want to be, uh, what do they call it? Recovering from fundamentalism. They're everywhere. And I think to myself, well, you were just stupid to begin with. And if there's such a word, you're stupider now. We ain't recovering from nothing good, neighbor. We're reviving from the Holy Ghost. Somebody say man, rock Everybody wants to focus on recovering. Oh, you're recovering. Oh, you need yeah. help. You need therapy. You're recovering. Let's focus on fundamentalist. We're recovering fundamentalism back from people who have hijacked it. We are biblical Phew. family. We are the fundamentalist. Man. That'll make a Baptist want to speak in tongues right there, boys. One. I'm going to tell you one thing. Uh, we better stay uh, in the old paths. Uh, but what are the old paths? I, I, I've, I've heard that my whole life, and nobody's ever been able to tell me what the old paths or the old time religion really is because it's whatever era you mm -hmm. overly romanticize in your mind as being when the church was it, right. Mm. Like it, lump it, pump it, jump it, take it across the street and dump it. We've raised a generation that is ashamed of our forefathers and act like they were somehow done wrong in the way they were brought up and they were damaged and they were scarred because they were raised in a home that had standards and convictions and kept them on the old time way. You got their number, boys. Y'all thought you started the podcast. You went and started a movement. Thanks for joining us for the Recovering Fundamentalist podcast. Make sure to stay tuned at the end of the show to hear more about the RFP sponsors. Now, here's your host for the Recovering Fundamentalist podcast, Nathan Cravat, J.C. Groves, and Brian Edwards. Well, guys... It has been an absolute incredible month, and uh, it is good to be back recording. We want to thank the RFP Network for filling in for us. They did an incredible job. I got to be honest, this, this was the best sabbatical. They, they, they nailed it. I'm talking yeah. the girls the very first week. Phenomenal episode. Beers and Bible did a great job. The mashup of For Freedom and... Uh, young Baptist, what do we call them? The Young Freedom for Baptist <laughs> podcast. <laughs> they, they mashed up the intros and they, they, they did get a little haughty, said that they did best. And then youth and culture come right in with the bomb and just brought on John Cooper from Skillet. So what, a, what an incredible, incredible break. Did y'all have a good time on sabbatical? 
Well, I don't know that it necessarily felt like a sabbatical because I think all of us have been Non-stop. running wide open. Yeah. And uh, so I think when our listeners hear us say sabbatical, mm-hmm. they have this idea that, you know, we're laid on a beach somewhere and um, mm-hmm. we're, you know, we're just chilling and, and having a great time. But JC, you were actually preaching like 14 times a day for two weeks. Yeah, it was nonstop. Yeah, that's crazy. It was fun though. I loved it. That's, I used my vacation time. I, I'm thankful for the call and the opportunity to preach. Well, do you know, you actually proved in just about a week and a half time that you have more sermons than America's <laughs> premier evangelist. So um, I think that's, there's something to be said for that. That's great. And I ran into so many people up in Scroon Lake, New York at word of life at the pines, um, over at the Ridge. I mean, just some incredible, incredible folks and word of life Bible Institute word of life in New York and in Florida is such a great place. I want to give a shout out to Tommy Sewell who is the director of Word of Life Island, just a great guy, young man that is, man, he, he is doing a great job over there. I absolutely love everything that is happening at Word of Life. And it's pretty cool. I got to spend the entire week with Joe Stoll, the former president of Moody Bible uh, Institute. Yeah. And man, he is a incredible guy. We sat and had lunch a few days and just to hear his stories and his uh, wisdom uh, he, he wants to come on the podcast. And so Joel, if you're listening, thanks for checking out the recovering fundamentalist podcast. And, uh, guys, I, I'm excited about where we're heading in the last part of this year. Cause we got a ton of stuff coming up, but, uh, yeah, I'm excited about it. It's going to be a good, good fall. Yeah. I'm excited to, uh, be back in ministry with Mr. Nathan Cravat yes. in a greater way. <laughs> um, we were brothers in arms from the start. It was meant to be like that. And uh, all of our guys, JC, you would think the prodigal's coming home. It's like they're oh, yeah. all waiting on the front porch, and That's they just so can't cool. run to wait out, uh, run out and fall on his neck and kiss him. <laughs> it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a beautiful welcome home. Well, we're having Hope Church pastors gathering this weekend, right? Absolutely. I think your boy may come up and crash it one night. I don't know. We'll see. That would be awesome. It'd be <laughs> worth it. First time I've been invited to a Hope Church thing. But... Oh, you, you'll <laughs> love it. You'll love it. I promise that. JC, I want the first Hope Church you come to to speak at to be Asheville. Deal. Good. I will be okay. there. Yes. Thank Consider you. yourself invited. We'll, we'll I hope break that this. I can go to every streak. Hope Church but Danville first. <laughs> <laughs> oh, speaking of Asheville, I'm in the process of moving. Yes, sir. Um, up there. I've been back and forth working on the house. As a matter of fact, Ryan Edwards oh, yeah. swung a sledgehammer a couple of weeks ago and uh, about three and a half weeks ago. And uh, have you been out of the bed since you swung that sledgehammer, Brian? No, I found out after uh, I've been living in extreme pain, fellas. This has been this has been a bout of it, and uh, I found out yesterday from the MRI that I have a protruding disc, and then I also have above that a bulging disc. And I think, Good. you know, I didn't realize that I had the power of Thor when I swung that <laughs> sledgehammer. <laughs> Uh, so here's the funny thing. I felt like Thor swinging the sledgehammer and now I felt like disabled ever since. So uh, it didn't, I think it didn't end well. I think your arms outpaced your spine, Brian. Yeah. You know, <laughs> JC always picks at me about being old. I'm not old yet, but I will say this. I've got to remember my age and the fact that, you know, you don't loosen up and you don't do things and, and then suddenly, you, you know, you think you're all manly and you, yeah, you learn better. But yeah. by the way, speaking of the fall and speaking of mm-hmm. JC speaking places, if I'm not mistaken, you're going to be at Hope Church Danville at the For the Sake of oh, the Gospel there it conference. Is. Man. Yes, you are. You and got you're, you're going to be preaching. Yeah, buddy. We're all going to get to, this is going to be an incredible time and uh, spots are filling up really quick for the sake of the gospel conference coming up November 3rd and 4th in Danville, Virginia at the hope church, Brian Edwards home. And uh, it's going to be an incredible night. 
It's going to get kicked off on Thursday night with Hope Church. They're going to be leading us in worship. We've got Jared Wilson is going to be in preaching and Nathan Cravat. They're going to get the night started. The whole theme is the gospel and what two premier speakers to start the event off than Nathan Absolutely. and Jared Wilson. And I'm fired up to hear both of them. And then Friday morning, we're going to wipe the sleep from our eyes and put the coffee down our throats. And we're going to get kicked off with connection music. And uh, that is the worship team from connection church in Statesboro. And then we're going to have uh, one of my favorite people in the word world, Mark Milioni and myself, we're going to be preaching that morning. Got his name, right? Score yes, you and then did. that <laughs> evening. Uh, we are going to wrap it up with a concert from JJ Weeks Band and the Edwards, Craig and Brian are going to tag team and take it to the house. And uh, I'm excited about this entire weekend. It's only $50 a person and uh, spots are filling up quick. You can go to recoveringfundamentalist.org and buy your tickets today. And guys, I think this is a good time for me to tell you that I had lunch this week with John Beasley and Stephen Boyce, and is. they are with Explore Christianity, an apologetics ministry, and they have agreed to come to the meetup, awesome. to the conference, and they're going to be speaking, both of them, on Saturday morning. We've added oh, wow. another bonus session so saturday morning you can stay over with us and hear some incredible i love apologetics guys i could sit and listen to it all day long yes. and between these two brains incredible. and uh man i think it's gonna be an awesome way for us to cap off the conference yeah and uh it's it's just gonna be amazing and in today's culture man apologetics is desperately needed yes and then and jc i need to clear up one thing you just said Brian and Craig Edwards won't take it to the house. Brian will sweep off the front stoop and Craig <laughs> Edwards will take it to the house. There it is. <laughs> there it is. I know who the preacher is in this family. Yeah, trust buddy. me. But what an incredible conference this is going to be. $50. You're going to get connection music, hope music, and JJ Weeks band. You're going to get Jared Wilson, Mark Milioni, Craig Edwards, Nathan Cravat, Brian Edwards, and then a bonus with explore Christianity. This is an incredible, incredible conference, not just because we're putting it on, but I would go to it even if we weren't. It's the For the Sake of the Gospel Conference in Danville, Virginia, November 3rd, 4th, and now the morning of the 5th. Come and be with us. Go to recoveringfundamentalist.org. Get your tickets today. And fellas, we only have a few spots left on the trip to Israel, January 27th through February the 4th. And I'm excited that both Edwards are going on the Israel trip. We're not only going to get to go to Israel <laughs> with Brian Edwards, but with the Craig Edwards in Israel, I'm, I'm fired up. There's only Dude. a few spots left for this. You need to jump in on this for sure. It's going to be amazing. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I've been studying up. I don't know if you guys are watching videos and things like that, but I'm so excited about going to Israel and especially with the people that are going to be there. This yeah. is yeah. we've got a chat group going already with all the pastors and man, it just, it's making me more and more excited every single day. And yeah. I, I mean, we're right at 25, maybe 26 people registered and we had originally capped it at 30. Yeah. So we're, we're getting very close. If there's any chance you can make it to this, you need to sign up. It's only $2,800. It's a $350 deposit when you go and register. Hey, and my dad, you know, he's the slowest walker in the history of the world. If we let him walk the Via Della Rosa, we'll be there for the second coming of Christ by the time he gets to the end. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, it'll be awesome. I'm having that visual in my brain. Imagine being able to walk the Via Dolorosa with Craig Edwards. That's, I, I listened to Craig Edwards preach when I was a little boy. I mean, think yep. about that. That's, that will be incredible. I'm looking forward to that. I listen we to have Brian. to make it happen, bro. I, I may have to boy. carry him the second half of it or something. <laughs> <laughs> I listened to Brian preach when I was a little boy, so I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> both <the Edwards preach. laughs> oh, my goodness. I love oh, it. Man, we're going to Israel January 27th through February the 4th. $2,800. This is a pastor's only trip. Go and register today at recoveringfundamentalist.org. And uh, we would love to have you go with us there.
man, I think we need to dive into this episode, guys. I mean, I love the talk of the camp meeting and the yeah. Israel trip and all of my ailments and <laughs> everything else that we've talked about, but I think we need to dive into what might be controversy that we will try to handle well. I got to be honest, I'm not looking forward to hearing this again. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, we've all heard the saying that that Christians are the only people that shoot their wounded. Yeah. And unfortunately, that that charge has been true at times. Uh, but I think sometimes, and we're going to see an example of this tonight, sometimes uh, I think it, it would go a little bit further than shooting our wounded. Mm -hmm. I think it sometimes... Um, we're a little bit more like animals who eat their own and like a cancer that turns in on itself and eats its own body up inside of the IFB. This, what this episode tonight is going to be an, a perfect example of this inside of the IFB for years, there has been fighting. Mm -hmm. We all know that there are many different camps. We all know that some of those camps speak out against other people and we are going to be basically reviewing a video of sermon tonight preached by Pastor Gavin Flat. <laughs> and, um, you know, I don't really know that we have to say a lot. <laughs> it's just the fact that he is going after not only brothers in Christ, he's going after other independent fundamental Baptists that we would consider extremely conservative, I think, we would have to say a lot of the guys he's going after call us liberals and call us compromisers. And he, Gavin, is turning the whole coin on its head and going after these men. And we've said before that legalism <laughs> eats its own. Yeah, Legalism turns on itself and legalism never goes far enough. There's always somebody that's far, farther down the road than you are that would look at you and call you a liberal. I mean, we can look at the Amish. They would look at all the independent Baptists and say they're compromising liberals. And and so I, I think we need to dive into this thing tonight and just see where it takes us. I think that's a good idea. And I'm glad you mentioned the Amish, uh, Nathan, because that's a great example. This past week, I heard a young former Amish guy having a conversation. And do you know there were Amish who stopped fellowshipping with other Amish because they would use buttons on the men's shirts? And because they used buttons on the men's shirts, they would say that they were worldly or because they used mm. a certain shape tail light on the back of their carriage. And literally it's taught they are worldly. They are going to hell. Yep. And and you're right some level of that exists in all legalism. Yeah. Well, let's roll the tape and anytime you guys want us to pause it, we'll, we'll pause it and have a little discussion. Pause. I don't want to hear it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Right into the thought. We started a series uh, last week. Uh, on how do we know if Satan is behind a contemporary song and uh, dealt with a lot of different things last week. And uh, so uh, we dealt with Satan uh, himself last week and, uh, and the originator of a lot of this contemporary music is Satan himself. And, uh, and so he knows a lot about worship, uh, seeing the Holy of Holies and set in heavenly places where godly music and worship was going on continually. Uh, every, I'm talking about throughout the, the ages of time, throughout eternity, uh, worship will be going on. And Satan seen that. And Satan uh, sat in the midst of that. And so if anybody knows how to make it look godly, that's right. But having enough devilish yeah. to give him glory and that he could have victory, 
you know, a little bit of victory here and there, it would be Satan himself. And so that's what we're dealing with a lot of times with this contemporary music. And uh, we dealt with uh, what is contemporary music. We sing a lot of contemporary songs, songs that's been written in our generation and songs that's been uh, right now for this right now generation. And even since we've been alive, I mean, back 70s and 80s and before that, I mean, it, uh, songs were written, and like we said, Amazing Grace was a contemporary song at one point, and somebody wrote that in that generation, in that time frame, And but what the difference is, is if Satan is in the midst and behind a contemporary song, or is God in it? And so uh, we looked last week uh, on Satan and looked at uh, why and what he's trying to do with music. I mean, you know, we have a lot of people that have Baptist on their sign. And even to be honest with you, I mean, it's crept into a place uh, to where now it's a King James Bible believing Baptist churches are letting this music creep in. That's nothing but devilish never nothing but worldly uh, music that's going on and listen if we let the devil have a toehold in anything that's done uh, in our church or in our life it won't be long he will be full blown inside the building inside the Bible inside the worship inside the services and listen we want to uh, we want to keep his toe out we want to keep his tongue out and we want to keep his music out amen and what we see uh, that Satan is the originator that's behind a lot of these songs but now uh, we're going to look at uh, number two on how to know if Satan is behind a contemporary song no. uh, are you, he never established that Satan is behind contemporary music. What <laughs> verse is he drawing that from? Like he's saying second book of the opinions. He's saying now that we know Satan is behind contemporary music. How do we know that? I'm assuming that's based on last week's sermon, the, the sermon before this, because this is a second part, but don't make us listen to that one. No, we're not going to go back and listen to that one, but we all know that the Bible doesn't talk about contemporary music. So you, you would have to twist pretty any, hard. You know, I wonder if they sang any hymns on this day that were bar tunes. Uh, he's actually going to get to that. Let's let's oh, keep listening. Can't wait. <laughs> Number two is by the spirit of the song. If you got your Bible, First Timothy chapter four. First Timothy chapter four and verse one. The Bible says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from meats which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth for every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer if thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ nearest us in the words of faith and of good doctrine whereunto thou hast attained. Now I want you to take your Bibles to 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. Verse 1, the Bible says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. 
because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. All right, we look now. Should somebody talk to him about proof texting? <laughs> Possibly. Do you think it would do any good? No, I don't think it. I, th I think he's, I think the Bible is a playground for him to twist mm -hmm. and spin into anything he wants it to say. Yeah, because none of the verses he read has anything to do with music whatsoever. And as a matter of fact, the first verses he read were about legalism, Correct. about people who can who, who forbid to marry people who forbid to eat certain foods that God has allowed. It's talking about legalism and their conscience is seared by believing something that is a tradition rather than scripture. And he's trying to turn it around and say that this, this is talking about contemporary music. Well, it just makes me sad because the people who sit in audiences like this, they don't know that what he's doing is called proof texting, right. that he's, putting a series of verses together so that then he can launch into um, his, his own point. What is no, nothing more than his own opinion. Yeah. And he's using the scripture to establish a basis for him to do that. And, and people assume because he read the Bible and he's the authority figure in the pulpit that what he's saying is from the Bible. Wow. Wow. Good point. I think, Brian, what you just said is why we've started this podcast. That's why we have done what we have done over this last three, almost four years now. Is be is that right? We're almost this four? is the third year. Third year, January will be four, right? But that that's the whole thing. We're like, don't just take what's being said as proof. Find out for yourself. Get in the word. Because exactly what you just said, Brian, is what happens all too often. And well, we get to hear the rest of the story. Yeah, let's go. We but how do we decipher? How do we know if Satan is behind a contemporary song? I mean, we have to try the spirits. Right. How many of y'all have ever listened to a song? And maybe it's been sang uh, on the radio, or maybe it's been sang on on some YouTube or or some clip, and you say something. I'm talking about saved people. Yeah. I'm not talking about lost people here tonight, but I'm talking about saved people can say something's not right. So I don't know. I mean, they're, they're using the name of God. They're, they're saying and singing a song about the Son of God, about Jesus, and, and they say blood, and they say grace, and they say his name, but there's something that's just not right about it. I want to pause it right there because he's he read 1 John chapter 4 that says to uh, try every spirit. And then it says, because many false prophets have gone out into the world, uh, test the spirits to see whether they're from God. He says, by this you will know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of Antichrist, which you have heard is coming into the world. So First John 4 tells us, that we try the spirits based on content. Amen. So if you're going to apply this to a song, mm. it should apply to the content of the song, but he's getting ready to preach an entire sermon based on how you feel about a song. Yeah. He he's saying, if your spirit doesn't feel this certain way, well, that's not what first John four is talking about. First John four is saying it. You, you base it on the content because false spirits preach a false gospel. 
Mm. And yeah. he's about to preach an entire sermon saying the exact opposite of what the Bible says. And it's all based on feelings and it's all based on his opinion. Well, that's why he would be a proponent for they're holding up the ladder that I'm climbing on. I mean, it has nothing to do with anything. Oh, yeah. Man, you just made a great point, Nathan, a great point. Well, it's the point of the text that he's reading, and he never mentions it. His own text is proving what he's saying incorrect. Yes, he's using God's word to suit his own means. And I think there's a special condemnation in Scripture against that. We don't have time to get into all that, but he's twisting God's word and saying God's saying something he didn't say. Mm. I get I get physically angry. I, my heart's beating fast right now. I get angry listening to stuff like this. So let's listen to some more. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Anybody ever felt like that? Yeah. Felt like that. The song, yeah. and it may be popular. It may be in great demand. It may be sang in some Baptist churches. It may be sang by some Baptist preachers and some Baptist preachers' kids. But listen, there's something about it that your spirit on the inside that God sealed you with, that God put in you to become the temple of God, took up residency on the inside of you that said something is is not right about that song. God is not leading me. God is not moving me on that song. Do you guys remember not too long ago, a certain independent fundamental Baptist pastor's kids mm. was singing the goodness of God and got called out on it on uh, bad sermons. Mm. And that, that hit the fan really hard. Well, that's who he just mentioned. That's the first shots fired right there. And and this guy is someone who comes after us all the time. But doesn't even know if you're saved, JC. That's the fruit inspector. That's that's it. And he's getting called out by this pastor. And this pastor's just getting started in calling out people. But contemporary music is acceptable if you sing it in a southern gospel style, Nathan. Hello. In a country way with a piano. Yes. yes I, and I if when and if when you raise your hand, you hold it right beside of your face with your palms straight out, you've got to yeah. do that. And then it's acceptable. Yes. Or Mufasa. Yeah. And I, so I don't think yeah, there's any doubt he's, he's calling out <laughs> Cody Zorn and his church and his kids right yeah. there. So let's see what else is in bounds for this guy. Now it may have a good beat. It may have good words. It may have a good melody. It may have a good repeat and a repeat and a repeat. It may get stuck in your head. But it don't make it to your heart. The Spirit says something. Something's not right about that. Something's not right about that song. We have to look at it as we looked at these verses tonight. We have to understand that the spirit that lives on the inside of us is our teacher. He's the one that says this is right or this is wrong. It does not matter uh, what our, our, our forefathers said. It does not matter what the leader of the IFB says. It does not matter what maybe some old-time preacher that's straying the way, that's going another direction, that says now it's okay and now it's all right. But there's a spirit that liveth on the inside of every born-again believer that God himself put on the inside. And if he says not right, it's not right. There's two spirits. There's, there's a spirit of God and there's a spirit of evil. There's a spirit that God give us, but then there's also a devilish spirit that is in this earth today. And listen, we all know, we could say, oh, you know, don't listen to that Marilyn Manson. Don't listen to that Hannah Montana. And don't listen to this. And don't listen to this rapper and that rapper. Hey, because all they are is evil. And we all agree with that. Because of the content. 
that they're singing about. Their content is so vulgar that we don't think about the beat of it. We don't think about the influence of it. We don't figure out or, or even think about uh, the foundation of it. But we just say, I mean, those words are vulgar. What they're talking about is vulgar. What they're demonstrating is vulgar. What they're trying to get you to do is vulgar. And we say, that's evil. But that's not what I'm dealing with. What we're dealing with right here inside this church and what Baptist churches are dealing with this very hour is they're not telling you to go smoke pot. They're not telling you to go prostitute your body. They're not telling you to go drink a cold beer. I mean, they're saying Jesus. They're saying God. They're saying grace. And but listen, there's a devilish spirit upon a lot of this contemporary music. And we have to try the spirits in our music. Because there's two spirits. So for him to be able to say that and be an authority on saying that, does that mean he's been listening to contemporary Christian music? Yikes. Oh, yeah, he ha he has. I can guarantee you. <laughs> so let me ask you a question. Have either one of you guys bought Marilyn Manson's last album so that you can listen to it? No. no. I haven't. Have Have any of you bought any of the other albums that would represent those type genres of music? Maybe Hannah Montana. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, I haven't either. And so I do have Apple Music though, so I have access to all of it, but I promise I haven't been listening to that. Right. My point is <laughs> my point is if he truly believed it was devilish, then he wouldn't listen to it. I, mm -hmm. I don't have time to listen to what I believe is carnal. Yeah. I don't I don't have time for that. I'm not I'm not allowing that to even have a place in my heart and in my life. And so why, if he believes there is an evil spirit associated with it and it's devilish, how can he speak with such authority on it? Good question. We would have to take a look at the spirit of what contemporary music is spawned from. The majority of this charismatic, contemporary music uh, that, I mean, they say God, they say Jesus, they say everything we like to hear, but it's not of God spawned from a Pentecostal movement. Y'all listening to me? And a Pentecostal movement has got the spirit of evil. Now you can take that up with your mama and you can talk to your daddy about it. And you can tell every preacher in town. But you tell them Brother Gavin said that a Pentecostal church is full of devils. They have devilish actions. They have devilish music. They have devilish beat. They have a devilish message. And it spawned hey, back way back years ago hey, when the Pentecostal movement began. When the Pentecostal movement began, and I want, I can't remember how the name of that street was a zoo, something I thought was a zoo zoo street. <laughs> and they had some great meeting of God, they said. And in that meeting, they said they went on for a very extended amount of time and they said this is a great movement of God and, and this is what they base uh, what their foundation is upon and I mean they'll tell you it's Bible and it is in the Bible what they do but when we find it in the Bible their practices it's God revealing to us that those are devilish things that are taking place they said at that street where that, that meeting took place that there was a lot of convulsions going on. Yeah. Jerking movements. Yeah. Right. Laughter and, and on the floor, I mean, violently shaking themselves. Talking about demons. There was a devilish speaking in tongue. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Find me in the book of Acts where there's an unknown tongue. 
Ain't that where we base our originating, starting the church on? Right. Yeah. Amen. It's the King James Bible translators that italicize the word unknown. Mm. Yes, it was. That's a great point. Had they just had they just interpreted it languages, there wouldn't be this confusion, would there? Mm. And had they not added to the text. Correct. I agree. Yeah, but he'll defend that. So oh yeah. Itali- don't forget the italicized words are inspired also. Every jot and tittle. Ooh. Ain't that where we find that they sent out and went to their local assemblies and people were sent out and then they congregated together, they sang together, they worshiped together, they went door to door together, the local church. And they always go back to that day of Pentecost. But there was no unknown tongue spoken at the day of Pentecost. It said every man heard the message in his own language. There was not some kind of language that only you and God can interpret and know. And what I'm telling you this for is because this contemporary music has that spirit. It's a fleshly spirit upon contemporary. I'm talking about the contemporary songs that the devil's behind. It's all about a convulsion. It's all about a movement. It's all about a feeling. It's all about doing something that is unscriptural, unbiblical, and it's not based upon the King James Bible. Hmm. Speaking of King James Bible, there he goes. So I, I want I think we need to say at this point that I don't it's not my job and I don't even care if anybody likes contemporary music. I think God gives us different types of music because different people have different tastes. I love Appalachian music. I love banjos. I love mandolins. I love that type mm-hmm. of music. I love bluegrass. It's love awesome. It. Some people hate it. They make fun of it. Some people hate country music. I, I think it's cool. Uh, I, there's certain types of music I listen to. And it drives me crazy. If he was up here saying, you know what? I just don't like that music and we're not going to have it in our church. That's his choice. He's trying to make a Bible issue out of something that the Bible is silent on and doesn't make an issue. Mm-hmm. Yep. Just that's- a shame it never addressed gospel music in America. I cannot believe we're only 15 minutes in on this. Let's go. Here we go. (laughs) This spirit, the originator, this charismatic uh, origination of these contemporary songs spawn out of a Pentecostal movement. You go into a Pentecostal church, you say, Brother Gavin, you going? No, I'm not going. I've been invited. I've been invited. I've been called Baptocostal. And I take offense to that. Did you hear what I said? You know, like a lot of people say, oh, you already tell you that's good. You got some life to you and your and your Bible and your Baptist. No, I take offense to that. I am zero Pentecostal. I am zero Pentecostal. Period. I'm Biblicist and I'm Baptist. Do you hear what I said? I'm practicing Biblicist, and I'm a practicing Baptist. And Biblicist overrules a Baptist, but I'm a Baptist because I'm a Biblicist first. We line up with scriptural doctrine and practices. Oh, no, you don't. That's why I'm a Baptist. Not because my grandparents were a Baptist, but that was one of my greatest, my greatest accomplishments in life. And my grandmother, after I surrendered to preach, every time there would be a stranger, she would introduce me. This is my grandson. He's a Baptist preacher. This is my grandson. He's a Baptist preacher. And I'm thankful for that title. But listen, I'm not a Baptist because my grandmother was a Baptist. 
that I'm a Baptist because it lines up with the with the, the commandments, with the ordinances of the doctrines of the Bible. Amen. That's why I put Baptist over my title. Amen. I'm a born again, baptized by immersion. Amen. Amen. I got baptized in the Holy Ghost Amen. the night that I got saved. Amen. That means I got fully immersed. I didn't have to wait for a second helping. I didn't have to wait for leftovers. But I got all the Holy Ghost that I was ever going to get. I got sealed to the day of redemption. But it's up to me to stay filled with him. But I ain't getting no more Holy Ghost. I didn't have to do something unbiblical to pretend that I got it. I had to work up a feeling. That's right. But the majority of the contemporary songs that are being sung in camps, in churches, in Baptist church, now we're letting all everything come in. Yeah. The foundation of it is from a Pentecostal background. And I'm going to prove that to you here in just a minute. Number one, when we think about how do we know if Satan is behind a contemporary song, because we've got to try the spirit of that song. Just because it's being played across the country does not mean it's right with God. Just because the Baptist church across the town, and, and oh, they stand on the truth, and, and they're a soul winning church, and, and they see people saved, and they see prayers answered, and they sing that song, does not mean that that song is of God. Just because the Gaithers record it and produce it I've never been I didn't know when I started this this series that, that we were going to get hit right in the face with people that call themselves independent fundamental old time preaching Baptist and playing full blown devilish ungodly music at their camps with thousands of young people being deceived to be taught that that's all right. They're being taught that it, even if you are saved, oh brother so-and-so that's got a big name and a big following, hey man, I'm talking about Ken and Barbie, got a great big following, got a great big leading, and I mean everybody's flocking head over heels, and they rent out coliseums, and they have big conferences, that even though it don't set right with my spirit, I must be wrong, because look how popular he is. Who could he be talking about? Who is an independent <laughs> Baptist hmm. and he could call he and his wife, Ken and Barbie, and he has thousands of young people and rents out a Coliseum. Who could he be talking about? Well, he's hmm. going to tell us in just a minute. He, he, he tries not to call his name, but eventually he gets there. So, so this is the second, person that he goes after well actually ct townsend and his wife becky i'm on because... the my seat here nathan you just gave it away <laughs> <laughs> by the way you know people can say people can say what they want to about the rfp i would never ever talk about ct townsend and his wife like that on this podcast in that way guys that's that's on some level in the same arena as the guys who went after our wives yeah, and, and referred to our wives in derogatory way, ways by referencing their looks and their appearance. He's doing that exact same thing. And I want our listeners to hear me say this in the same way it was wrong for the men who did that against our wives. This is wrong for him to do this against CT Townsend's wife. Yeah. And the, and the big thing is, is, I think this guy wants to be the Pope. I think he wants every conference, every church, every youth group to run the songs by him. 
Sure. Before they before they choose to play a song. What happened to Christian Liberty? Well, he needs to try the spirits for everybody. Apparently. Even and you know, Brian, on what you said, we're not gonna do that to them, even though they have people in to preach for them that do that to us. Yeah. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and that's one of the reasons we wanted to do this because he's going after guys who have gone after us, but we're really okay. here tonight to take up for those guys. <laughs> I, th I think CT's a, I think CT's a good guy. I, I respect a lot of the things he does. I don't think he's old paths. So I, I agree a little bit with that, but he's, he runs with a lot of old paths people. And, you know, I, I think he tries to do what he thinks is right. And I had family members that <laughs> go to that conference and a lot of the things he's about to say about that conference, it, it's wrong. Number two, uh, a lot of the things he's about to say about CT and Becky and some other people, it's, it's just hateful. And it sounds to me like the guy's just extremely jealous. Super jealous. Yeah, well, you know, I know CT on a, a pretty personal level. You know, he and I have had conversations together. And um, a little while back, I sat outside of a Cracker Barrel with him and two rocking chairs and we had a long conversation and he's always been incredibly kind to me and this man is getting ready to make accusations about him that are completely unfounded yeah let's continue and the devil has got contemporary music so close yeah. to godly music yeah. Yeah. that we look like the bad guy when we call that out. Right. Oh, they had a hundred and something people saved. Well, praise God for that. Right. But it didn't come through that contemporary music. Right. You know, the only reason they'll even see people really get saved is because they haven't yet turned on the King James Bible. Right. Here's a big issue. <laughs> the only reason people can get saved is because he uses a certain version of the Bible. The King James Bible is the only Bible you can be saved from. That's what he is absolutely clearly saying right there. Well, that's what Jack Howells said. And if Jack Howells said it, then you know Bob Gray believes it. And there you go. Yeah. Yeah. I know CT doesn't believe that, but they do use the King James Bible. Even though I don't believe they fully believe it, nope. I don't believe they fully stand on it. Right. I believe they preach somewhere that don't use a King James Bible. Right. They would let somebody behind their pulpit that don't use the King James Bible, right. but they only use it in their pulpit. Right. I believe they'd let them preach. They don't practice the King James Bible, right. but they let them preach. They let them sing. Right. 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 But we're dealing with that right now yeah. in where I'm, where I'm standing. Yeah. We're dealing with that this hour. Right. And listen, young people, we will not ever over my dead body will our church ever attend that conference. Did you hear me? Yeah. Mamas and daddies, if you send them, I'll rebuke you in front of everybody. Hey, man, listen, it ain't just contemporary music. I mean, they, I got a clip. They's full-blown singing John Denver. Yeah. Worldly music, putting that in our young people's head, thinking it's a joke, thinking it's funny. What'd you say, JC? They did do that. Yeah, they, they sang Country Road. I thought it was pretty cool. I mean, Country Road is a great, how can you go after almost heaven, West Virginia? And, you know, I wasn't there, and so I can't offer a true defense for it, but it probably was connected to the fact that CT is from West Virginia. I would, I would say think so. that would have something to do with it. Yeah, I saw the clip of it, uh, not what he said before, but of them singing, and it was, they had their cell phones out, they were waving them around. It was, it was pretty cool. I'll dare them have fun. <laughs> Right. It's not funny. Right. Devilish music gets in the minds of these young people right. and they can't get it out. Right. 
You know, the biggest thing that concerns me about that, Nathan and JC, one of his heroes is a man by the name of Tony Hudson. Hello. The last time I was in a meeting with Tony Hudson, we were in Hot Springs, Arkansas, back in my independent fundamental Baptist days. I was coming out then, but I was invited to that meeting for us to sing. Well, that night after the service, after Tony preached forever and a day against everything you could ever imagine, several of us jumped in the Suburban to head out to eat, and we were all going to ride together. The first thing that happened was country bluegrass music, a song about drinking, got turned on the radio, and Tony Hudson said, I'd tell you one thing, boys, that's got the anointing on it. (laughs) He laughed really big. The guy who was with me, Nathan, you've met him. He attends our church, Big Randy. We call him the dog. Randy was with me. He literally leaned over and whispered in my ear and said, this guy is full of crap. Mm -hmm. So I just want to say to the man who's preaching this sermon that I've never met, before you jump on somebody else for singing John Denver, you might ought to talk to your hero about all the country music and the secular bluegrass music he listens to and says it's got the anointing on it. Wow. There it is. Amen. Oh, amen. Yeah. Can't get it out. But it's a big funny game. Yeah. And we're the hardcores. We're we're the unto- we're the uh, intolerables. We're the hate mongers. Yeah, you're right. I hate sin and everybody that promotes it. I hate sin and everybody that promotes any sin. Are Christians supposed to hate sinners hmm. who promote sin? All sinners promote sin. Where where do we see it's right for us to hate sinners that promote sin? My flesh is a sin manufactory. Yeah. Or I just made up a word. Manufactory. My, I like my that. My flesh is a sin factory. It manufactures sin constantly. I'm supposed to hate my own sin. But he's he just said twice in a row he hates anybody who promotes sin. He did. Did did Jesus hate people who promoted sin? No. I think he died for them. Yes, he did. He loved them. Every drop of blood he had. Any shape, any form, any music, I'm against sin and I hate it just like God does. The spirit that's upon it. Well, that- Hold on. Did he just say he hates sin like God does? He said that. JC, what do you think about that? I don't think he's going to die for it. Or he would probably go to the buffet and think about it. <laughs> I shouldn't have asked JC what he thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was good. That one's staying in. Here we go. <laughs> one, a foreign spirit. Look at First Timothy chapter four that we read here just a minute ago. First Timothy chapter four. Verse one. I put too many bags. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Listen, if you've ever heard a song, if you've ever heard a message, if you've ever heard a conversation, if you've ever heard a Sunday school lesson yeah. that your spirit said, yeah, right. Right. no, I don't think that's right. Yeah. 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 right. I don't think that's right. right. 
You say, what was that telling you? That that was being taught, that was being sung, that was being preached of a foreign spirit other than the one that liveth on the inside of the children of God. Right. Right. Amen. Literally happening it's right foreign. Right. It's just you say, well, what, what do you mean by foreign? Well, if our country goes and, and plays in the Olympics, Brother John, and they win gold. And they stand up on that platform. And there may be a Russian on the right side and a, and a, and a, Jap a, Jap a, a J Japanese on the left side, but the Americans standing in the middle, uh, they don't play the Russian song and they don't play the Japanese anthem, but they play, hey man, the anthem of America. You say, why? Because that's their song. The Spirit of God does not, is not conforming to a song that's not his. The spirit cannot be duped. The spirit cannot be manipulated. The spirit cannot be fleshly uh, uh, driven to just let things go, let things go by because the spirit of God is God, the truth of glory that lives on the inside of us. A God that cannot lie. A God that cannot lie. And he's not going to be duped and manipulated into any lie, whether it comes in the shape of music or teaching or preaching. Hey, Amen. If it's a lie, the truth, the spirit of truth reveals it's not right. Can we just stop for a second and thank God that we're not under this anymore? Mm. Yes, praise Man, the Lord. Exactly I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here are. right now thinking it's torment listening to this. <laughs> it, it is. It, it is. takes me back to the thousands of sermons mm. I sat under just like this. I want to yep. say to our listeners, the RFP, the host of the RFP, in no way endorses <laughs> anything he's doing right now Yes, because he has actually completely misrepresented this text. Nathan said it a moment ago. The doctrines of demons or of devils, as it as it's translated in the King James, this was legalism. This was yep. offering people a means other than the finished work of Christ. It was achieving something through your flesh, and he's completely misconstruing the scripture and and. It breaks my heart for the people who are sitting in that room. Guys, I am so glad that God set us free from that. Amen. He's adding rules to the Bible, which is actually what this text is about. Correct. He's doing what it's commanding not to do. And I've always heard that if you have a very weak point, say it louder. Mm. So I, th I think the reason he's screaming so much is to make up for his very, very, very weak points. I went into this with an open mind. If he could show me scripture, you know, uh, in context, I would listen to him. But so far, all he's done is twist scripture. Well, if you're going to scream a God who cannot lie, at least make sure you represent his words accurately. Amen. Amen. It's not right. It's foreign. It's like somebody coming up to me and speaking uh, Arabic. I don't know what you're saying. Right. It's foreign to me. Right. I can be taught to learn the Arabic language. You could come up and speak Spanish to me. And other than burrito, taco, or Taco Bell, I don't know what you're talking about. Right. Maybe Chalupa. <laughs> Gordita. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Melanesa. There are a few words I know. But you could teach me uh, how to speak Spanish. You could teach me how to fluently because I'm compliable that way. I can learn that. I can learn another language. But the Spirit of God, that's a God that never changes. He cannot lie. 
cannot be conformed, cannot be changed, cannot be talked into, cannot be popularized, and to believe a devilish contemporary Christian song. And no matter how big the crowd is, and no matter how many times they got their hands up and how much swaying they got and how much dancing they do across the platform and how many times they act like they're in agony crying and how many high fives they got and I mean the big crowd and no matter how big the coliseum is no matter how big the following is no matter what compromising preachers have went that way and the spirit that liveth on the inside of the children of God it cannot be lied to. He cannot be manipulated. And when he says it's wrong, he means it's wrong. It don't matter. Hey, 20 years from now, if it's the most popular song that it's ever been, or the Spirit of God will still say, it's wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. Because it's got a foreign spirit on it. Hmm. It's not of the Spirit of God. We're not talking about our feelings. You could say what a wonderful name Jesus is. And I'll say, that's right. It is wonderful. And it is powerful. And I can agree mentally. And I can agree physically. That's right. But spiritually. When that song is a devilish contemporary Christian song that's drawing maybe just a little bit at a time, drawing you away from biblical truth. Trying to get you to play into your flesh and play into your feelings. And they just a little bit, just get a little toe hold in. And the spirit that's living on the inside of you says, Boy, I feel bad saying something about this, but it ain't right. And when the preacher's preaching and the spirit is bearing witness with the spirit that lives on the inside of you, yeah. hey amen, just like when the preacher preaches and nails you to the wall, yeah. your feelings and your flesh does not like it, but yeah. something on the inside says he's telling the truth. Yeah. Hey, you got a choice to make. Either get it right or stay wrong. Yeah. And it's the same on music. Yeah. That's right. Amen. How do we know if the devil's behind a contemporary song? Well, if it has a foreign spirit, a charismatic, contemporary, Pentecostal type song, a foreign spirit. You say, why have you never spoken tongues? Because the spirit that I got sealed with and saved by the night that I got saved never has told me to speak in an unknown tongue. I don't believe for a second that those people that do that, I believe they do feel a spirit. I really do. I don't think they're lying about that. And I believe for the majority of the crowd, they're not trying hey, to make up some kind of worldly, fleshly spirit. Hey, but it's the atmosphere they're in. It's the music and the beat and the false prophet hey, that's preaching to them that works up their emotion, works up their feeling. Hey, but why do you think they got to beat the ever living out of the drums? Why do you think they got to play the music hey, so loud you can't even think? You know why? They want to move your feelings and drown out the spirit if it lives on the inside of you. Right here, you should add a, a video of some of the like, uh, uh, like the people running and stuff like that at IFB camp meetings. Oh boy! Like pause it, yeah. like, for reference, and then just do some like <laughs> people running and shouting and. Like, I think that's uh, I think that's a going, great point. Yeah, homeboy going like this, like holding what's his face up podcast, uh, where Tony Hudson's yeah. picking him up. You know, Barry Goodman, going, Barry Goodman, yep. where he's holding up the X like that. That's this right here. Yeah, it's what he's speaking out against. Why do they call him a Baptocostal? Right, because they're doing the exact same things in their they camp don't meetings. Speaking tongues, they're just screaming and hollering and amen and running. Great and point, way, JC. Did everybody notice a few minutes ago? He called it demonic, 
and Christian. Hmm. He said demonic contemporary Christian music. How can it be demonic and Christian? Good <laughs> I point. I don't think that works. <laughs> That's right. How many could say, I know I'm saved by the grace of God, no doubt about that. Sure. Raise your hand. How many of y'all could say, well, being saved, I've been in some wrestling matches with the spirit and with the flesh. Yeah. There's been some things that my spirit says you need to do. My flesh says, uh, don't do that. Yeah. You don't want to do that. And there's some things that my spirit says don't do that my flesh says, it's okay. It's not that bad. And I mean, there's a wrestling match that goes on on the inside. It's the same old music. And if a person that has a wicked root about them and a church and a leader of a church and a leader of a contemporary soul has a wicked foundation they love to play the music they love to get the beat going they love to have it blaring but where that wrestling match that's going on from the spirit and the flesh it tries to drown out the spirit and overload the flesh where you'll react in that Instead of the Spirit. I've been saved for over 20 years. I've been in some Holy Ghost filled services. I'm talking about so thick. Hey man, I felt like I had to cut through to get out of there. But I never one time wanted to flop around the floor like a fish out of water. You know why? Because the Spirit of God will not lead a person to do that. That's confusing. I never had. So then, what does he do? with all those services when they run and shout, I'm not going to call his name because I don't want to give him any airtime, mm. but one of the guys that he preaches with, there was a video a little while back of him staggering across the front of the church building, yelling out, I'm drunk in the Holy Ghost, as he was staggering all around. What is the difference? It's the same picture. Yep. Yeah, it's just I wanted to talk ridiculous. Talk in an unknown tongue. Right. You know why? Because the real spirit that lives on the inside of a yeah. born again believer says that's not right. Hey, how are they going to know that you're bragging on me? Right. How are they going to know they're going to testify? Let the redeemed, the Lord say so. Let the whom that they, that's been redeemed out of the hand of the enemy. Right. I mean, we're supposed to testify to glorify God. Right. I, I do believe that the Holy Spirit speaks to Christians and leads Christians, but the main way the Holy Spirit speaks to the heart of Christians is through Scripture. Yes. So if we judge a song based on the content, does it line up with Scripture? Then we have a standard in black and white. We can look at Scripture and say this song is a demonic song or this song is a Christian biblical song that honors God. He's wanting to say how you feel in your spirit, inside of your spirit, that's the standard, not based on the word of God, just mm -hmm. based on how you feel. So while I agree the Holy Spirit does lead us and, and speak to us, how can we tell who's right? Because some Christians obviously are okay with contemporary music and some aren't. If we leave scripture out of this equation, then it's just based on what your pastor says or what you say or what your opinion is. We have to base how the Spirit leads us on Scripture. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's just a subjective standard. I heard some guy talking the other day about hymns, and he was like, well, if it's in a hymn book, it's a hymn. But if you think about it, the new hymn books that are out, How Great Is Our God, Indescribable, songs that people would have said were Chris Tomlin worship contemporary songs 15, 17 years ago are now in a hymn book. So Bill and Gloria yeah. Gaither songs are in the hymn because book. He lives. He touched like all those songs are now in the hymn book. So are these songs, you know, contemporary because they don't fit your preference or are they him? You know, that's, it's such a null and void argument. Yep. JC, you, you almost mentioned a song. I just can't sing. I can't either. <laughs> I, I cannot myself. sing. I cannot sing. He touched me. Go ahead. <laughs> Every time our okay. quartet would do it, I'd be like this. It's just awkward. <laughs> if only us and God knows what we're saying, obviously we're glorifying us and God. Yeah. 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 
Right. Y'all hear me on that? Yeah. I'm trying to help you with some biblical truth. Yeah. Now, if that's a hard pill for you to swallow, either you got to swallow it and get right, that's the right pill, yeah. or you got to spit it out and stay sick and unbiblical and unscriptural on your beliefs. Yeah. They ain't but two options. That's right. That's right. That's right. But it's a four. Sorry. I've often wondered this, and it just feels like the time to, like, if there's two tent meetings happening right next to each other, one's a Baptist tent meeting, one's a Pentecostal tent meeting, you would not be able to tell the difference in the two tent meetings, some of them, the independent fundamental Baptist ones we've been in, without the, the speaking in tongues. So would the Baptist one preach that what's happening over there that looks exactly the same that happens in theirs is wrong? because and it's demonic because they're speaking in tongues and vice versa i've always wondered like what what would happen if you put a pentecostal and a Baptist, independent baptist tent revival right next to each other the only difference from an outsider looking in is speaking in tongues and would they preach against each other as one being true and one not being true just my brain wondering in that moment that's a that's a good idea i think uh, the only other difference may be the the version of the bible they use but true but the dress the style the Oh, yeah. songs in some mm -hmm. regards the running around the screaming the the you know er, literally almost er, there's been some independent fundamental baptist tent meetings i've sat in that i've heard people scream at the top of their lungs that's no different than what a fun uh, pentecostal camp meeting would be like you know maybe a healing line but you've got jesus with the little lamb's fan going uh, i don't know I, i've seen him swinging from rafters I've seen him jump in baptismal pools and swim around. I've, I've watched I, Dean he, McNeese chase people around a, a, a tabernacle before. Like, <laughs> what What in the world is spiritual about chasing people around and literally almost being angry, like yelling did your, at people singing? Did your spirit feel right about that when he did it, JC? No, I was having a freaking panic attack. Yeah, <laughs> so, what so that means Dean McNeese was wrong because you're the standard, how, how you felt about it. Hello. Based on this guy's it's logic. Standard. Yeah. Yeah. Spirit. Right. If you're truly saved, you're truly saved. Yeah. You've got a spirit that only leads you to righteousness. Right. And this truth. is the third time he's covered this in one sermon. All right. Your feelings will lead you any which way. Right. Yeah that it wants to pull you. Yeah, right. It'll lead you to popularity. It'll lead you to feelings. It'll lead you, well, that's what mom and them done. That's what our church does. That's what that's what my papa done. I mean, he taught it my whole life. I mean, it's got to be right. But what does the Spirit say? Is the Spirit revealing righteousness? Is it right or is it wrong? He's not going to leave a gray area. Confusion is of the devil. There's only the right way and there's only the wrong way. He's not days are made, and his days are made, and it's not their right, and we're partial right, either we're right, and they're wrong, or we're wrong, and they're right, that's it, how do we know if the devil's behind a contemporary song, because of a foreign spirit upon it, something just don't set right, something you may not know what it is right there, but I promise you this, if the Holy Ghost says, nah, yeah. Yeah. then you don't know, then I'd ask the one that told you it was wrong, and he'll lead you to the truth on why it's wrong. Right. Right. Some of y'all may be getting led that way tonight. Right. Hey, Amen. Foreign spirit. So in the absence of the Holy Spirit speaking to you, consult him. Basically, yeah. That's what he just said. If the Holy Spirit in you doesn't speak to you about it, then go to the one who said it was wrong and follow his leadership. Mm. Hmm. I think, I think Robert Jeff's got a lot of women to marry him and led a lot of people with that theology. Yeah. Number two, a fleshly spirit. A devilish contemporary Christian song will always move your feelings. Don't stir the spirit, but it moves this flesh. 
And then, you know. Yeah. 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 That's the Mufasa. Yeah, he's he's waving his arms around. Uh, I know you can't see this on the podcast, but waving his arms around, basically making fun of how people worship. That's this is this is dangerous, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Got her up on the platform. Her britches so tied on. You can tell she got a quarter in her pocket. It's on heads or tails. God ain't nowhere within a million miles of that. Hey, God ain't moving her. God ain't moving her. God ain't moving her. Then she's being moved, but it's moved of the feelings and not of the spirit. Amen. I tell you what, independent fundamental Baptists move a lot in in song services. Yeah. Whether it's choirs, yeah. whether it's congregationals, whether it's specials, they jump up, they run around. I mean, the McCamies move around quite a bit, didn't they? And Peg would throw them shoes off in a heartbeat. I'm telling you. So, it... well, there's a deeper issue with this too. What he just said across independent Baptist lines, whether it's Jack Treber, isn't he in California? Yeah, or it's. Bob Gray's son, or it's one of the camp meeting guys from North Carolina, they all make the statement he just made. God is not within a thousand miles of that. God is not in that. God is not using that. As if they have the authority to declare Mm -hmm. what is of God and what is not of God. That is a serious issue in the independent fundamental Baptist movement. That is. they speak for God. Mm. <laughs> God will not bless a spiritual song in flesh. Right. right. That's right. Oh, we're all in the flesh and we worship and we sing. I know that. I know that. But we have to be clothed in righteousness. Right. Amen. Holiness. Yeah. Right. Right. Amen. But this contemporary, ungodly contemporary Christian music, Christian music that's being driven by the devil, he wants it all flesh. That's right. And they may cry. And they may lift their hands. And they may hug each other. And they may come down to an altar and pray with each other. Yeah. But there's nothing spiritual taking place in it. It's all about beating a little harder. Play it a little, play it a little louder. Sing it over and over and over and over. And let Pretty Boy grab the microphone and sing it with his talented voice. Amen. Oh, 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 Right. And these Baptist people that are sending their young people to and be indoctrinated with that garbage, that devilish stuff that makes them think it's all right. 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 Yeah, that's right. Well, Were you going to say something, Brian? I was just going to say he just accused C.T. Townsend and those who are involved in a rise with influencing young people for the sake of the devil, man, that is a brutal accusation. This is classic eating their own, like, yes, it it really is. I keep thinking about the text. If we bite one another, we are both devoured. Mm. And so he's, he read two separate scripture texts. Let's just pretend that he didn't twist them and use them out of context. Even if what he was saying from the Bible was what it meant, it was, it's still, Bible is still a, an incredibly small fraction of what he's saying. The majority of what he's saying is his opinion. 
You cannot preach a sermon about this topic from the Bible. So True. not only did he twist scripture totally out of context, but the scripture that he did use out of context, it's a very small fraction of, of what he's even saying. It, it, Brian, you talk about the diving board text. This is, I mean, picture perfect diving board text. He just reads something and then he says what he wants to say. Yeah. And right now he's actually experiencing what he's preaching against being motivated by feelings. Oh, he's absolutely. Full of cheerleaders. The only thing yep. they're missing is short skirts and pom poms. I mean, they're cheering him on every single Ooh. thing he says. And he's every... getting more comfortable and more abrasive as he goes along. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. He's feeling it. But um, if CT Townsend were to happen to hear this podcast, CT, I want you to know that that the three of us as hosts don't believe that you would ever influence young people for the sake of the devil. That yeah. that's a brutal accusation. Yeah, and I mean, as as a point, JC spoke out on Twitter about some things that that happened at the conference, right? Yeah. He didn't get nasty. He didn't attack CT's character. He didn't go ad hominem against him. He just talked about the content and talked about some things that he disagrees with. I could talk about some things I disagree with. I listened to every single sermon that was preached at the Arise Conference because I wanted to see for myself. We can talk about that, but what this guy's doing isn't honestly critiquing from Scripture. He has a bone to pick with CT, and he's going after him and trying to devour him. Almost like he didn't get invited to speak or something. Almost like something like that. I, I don't think his chances are looking very good for <laughs> next year. <laughs> he gone. <laughs> By right. the way, Part Nathan, I'm impressed that you used ad hominem and used it correct. That was actually really nice. Well, well I, I try every once in a while. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. Just partially. Yeah. But they got to have flesh yeah. and spirit. Yeah. yeah. Let Barbie get up in her dress so tight. They had to yeah. paint it on her before yeah. she got up there. Yeah. Right. yeah. 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 Right. So everything she's Botoxed. Right. Right. Like they've been the field kid teeth whitening clinic. Did y'all hear what I said? Hey man, hey, he's a compromiser too. And he called me on my phone, 615-962-5266. I don't give one rip what you think, kid. You compromise. You compromise. I watched you years ago, and you went another way. You went another way, and you have disappointed a lot of us younger preachers that have stood and not wavered. You're a compromiser. Just like so he's yeah. gone after Cody Zorn. He's gone after C.T. Townsend, Becky. and he went after Phil Kidd. Isn't it wigs, not teeth? <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> he does do teeth whitening, I think. Does so, it? Yes, he does. Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm going to show up one day in Johnson City to get a toupee on my head. You need a wig, well, JC. Phil, I know you listen to every episode. I'm coming, baby, when I find that tape. And when I see my clips of Phil Kids preaching now, it still causes me to wince and cringe. And he's calling him a compromiser. <laughs> Man. <laughs> In what in what universe is Phil Kidd a compromiser? When Phil Man. Kidd isn't isn't preaching strong enough for you, something might be wrong there. And he did just give his phone number out. He did, and I'm not editing it out because he said mm -hmm. he didn't give a flip. So mm. here we go. Every one of them preachers and singers that was at the Arise Conference this week. I used so Stephen Cox. Who else was there? Uh, Kenny Baldwin, um, Jared. I mean, we could Dixon. we could just we could go on and on and on. He just called out every single person that was at the conference that preached. Um, yeah. So 
He just named them all. Listen, a lot of them singers get a blessing from it. But I want them to have come come to the church. We'll be over my dead body. We'll play the spoons and sing a cappella before we ever give them one penny of our offering. And I'll guarantee you this singing group, you can get a better offering here than you did at the Arise Conference. What's that about? Yeah, competition. I seriously Man. doubt he would pay them more than they made at the Arise Conference. But but why does he have to flex like that? Well, because of exactly what I said a moment ago. He's he's preaching by feelings. That's mm. exactly what this is. It's feelings motivated. Well, he's he's getting real comfortable here. So let's let's uh let's see where his feelings lead him. Do we have to I started coming here and preaching some truth tonight. He said, oh, you mad? Yeah, I'm mad. You're absolutely right, I'm mad. Hey, man, I'm sick and tired of the devil. Hey, pulling our young people away with a cloak and a manner of old-time religion. That's not old-time religion. That's not old-time religion. That's a fleshly spirit. Amen. That's right. That's right. Amen. By the way, Mr. I'm Old Time Religion, um, John Hamblin, loves him some Southern gospel music and loves taking pictures and going to concerts with people that use drums and people that do these songs. So, I mean, here we go. He, he may as well be calling out John Hamblin as well. Fleshly spirit. We got people selling out for a pocketbook and a bigger place. Hey, man, I'll call some other names, too. Hey, man, they don't give a rip who I am. I don't give a rip who they are. But I'm going to tell you who to watch out for. Hey, I'm going to tell you who to watch out for. They ain't none of these other people going to tell you the truth. Hey, man, because they're afraid to say something because they're afraid it might offend somebody. I ain't had the spirit that live on the inside of me tell me to shut up one time when I've said any of their names or called out what they're doing. Amen. That's who I'm going with. Amen. Fleshly. It's all about feelings. It's all about a mystical experience. Let's purpleize the lights and paint the lights and make everything mystical. Yeah. <laughs> It's all that we're tripping on LSD and, and flipping on some purple lights and, and blue and lights. And, and we don't, man, man, I want blue lights that blind it up in here. We're the children of light, not the children of darkness. Well, it just makes everybody feel comfortable, so that's what's wrong with it. Our flesh wants to feel comfortable. Our flesh wants everything to be right. But everything ain't right. It's all about a feeling, all about a mystical experience. All JC, your office is looking real mystical right now. Mm. You got that those purpleized and pink alized and he's what, literally said the same thing for 42 <laughs> minutes. This could have been an email. Like I mean, this is, he has not said anything. Well, JC, you need to be godly and you need to get you a hanging kitchen fixture and some <laughs> fluorescence, buddy. What is up with the light? It's so off centered and there's just one. It's like it used to be a pool hall. <laughs> uh oh. Oh my gosh. Enticing and seducing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And sensual. Yeah. yeah. Uh they ought to rename it Arouse instead of Arise. Right. Oh. Do you hear what I said? They ought to rename it to Arouse instead of Arise. Right. All it is is playing on your feelings, right. playing on your beat. Hey, man, it's sensual. Right. It's sensual. Right. It's sensual. Right. That's exactly what it is. Right. Just like the book of Job explains it's going to be. It you know he had an asterisk next to that, and he was like, hey, only if the crowd's there will I say this. And mm. they've been priming his pump the whole time, and so he felt comfortable enough to say that. Wow. Well, to, use the the word, of a rise. to use the word sensual? Um, man, <laughs> sensual behavior 
is is considered demonic you know in scripture the word sensual can can have that connection and you know guys i have to be honest i didn't watch the arise conference at all but i guarantee you there was nothing seductive and sensual happening on the platform no. i know their no. dress standards and and you know their rules and and what they would live by yeah that's he's so far out of bounds right now yeah this is this is an evil spirit it's yeah. what we're witnessing it's jealousy it's it's anger it's wrath it's everything it's it's ugly is really what it is but we're almost done the last days Right. Just move our move our emotions. That's why back in the day they used to say they ain't no praying knee on a dancing leg. Do you hear what I said? Hey man, now we're having line dance classes at the church house. Hey man, now pastor and pastor's wife out line dancing. God help us. God help us. We're praying in our flesh and in our feelings. It's all sensual. They ain't one country song, not one rap song, not one rock song that does not lead your flesh to do something that's unrighteous. Do you hear what I said? Hey man, I don't care how many how many gospel records they put out. I don't care how many number one hits they sang with with a uh, calm angel band and sang Amazing Grace. Hey man, unless they accepted the grace, all they're doing is singing about it. Hey man, we get the most talented person in this town had to sing Amazing Grace, and it might move our emotion and it might move our feeling, but we're talking about the spirit living on the inside of us. It's not fleshly. It's eternal. It's godly. But when it's all about fleshly, move your flesh. Entice your flesh. Now, I don't know even really what all this means. I don't even know if I believe it, to be honest with you. But they say, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put two cents in a song that moved my foot before it moved my heart. That's good. Hey, did he just admit that he doesn't like I'll fly away either? <laughs> there it maybe. is. <laughs> I think maybe he did. <laughs> I think he just admitted he doesn't really believe what he's saying, but he's going to say it anyway. I think that's what he just said. I don't care how many whoa, whoa, whoa's they put in it. <laughs> And how many Jesuses and how many names of God and how much grace they want to hey, sprinkle it with. But the, I'm talking about the main course on the plate is flesh. And they like to sprinkle a little bit of God on it. Hey, put a little, put a little sprinkle of pepper of God and grace. But the main course is nothing but flesh. Now I'm sure money did not move anybody that was at that conference. Probably didn't move none of them. They take a loss every year. All they do on their ministry, look it up. Could you imagine preaching a sermon just to point out the falls of something that you're angry about? Like, what was the prep time during this? You know what I mean? Like, I, granted, there, there's some things that we I didn't like about Arise, but. I'm not going to sit in my study and prepare a sermon to just comp like what he just talked about right there. How do you prepare for this junk? This is, it's unbelievable. He's obviously been on their website. He's, he's, he watched dude. every second of it. I wonder oh, if he's yeah. on. I'll tell you what you do. You chew a stick of juicy fruit. You open up the paper wrapper around it. You write some notes on the back of that. And you look at the website until you get thoroughly frustrated. And then you take your juicy fruit wrapper notes to the pulpit and you just scream whatever the heck you want to. Woo. Juicy fruit sermon. I've never heard of that, there but I is. like that. <laughs> I'm more of a big red guy. <laughs>
<laughs> Living in a shack by the road. Yeah. yeah. Got it rough. They can take a $30,000 loss every year. They're a bunch of liars, too. They lie in their doctrine, they lie in their music, and they lie on their taxes. Fleshly. That's a personal attack that he had better be able to back up, but I guarantee you he cannot. It's deformation of character. He doesn't know what CT's taxes are. He doesn't know how honest CT is on his taxes. Well, I do know several years ago, CT told me personally that he established a board of pastors that oversees his ministry. So he can't point the finger at CT Townsend. He would have to point the finger at everyone who sits on that board as if they are all intentionally dishonest. And I just want to say, I don't agree with what some of those men preach. I don't agree with the way they function and operate the local churches that they serve. But I believe those men love Jesus too much to be dishonest in the way that they're being accused of. And because C.T. Townsend lives in a bigger house than this preacher does, doesn't mean he's dishonest. Doesn't mean he's cheating on his taxes. What about this? The fruits. What's that producing? What's that devilish contemporary music? What's it producing? Right, right. Right. You think that whoa, whoa, whoa song? Mm -hmm. You think he's fleshly, ungodly, contemporary, devilish songs? You think it leads to any biblical fruit? Right. Not all right. No. You know why? Because 99.9% .9 of contemporary music of today is unbiblical. Yeah, right. That's right. That's right. That is a false statement. So that is not true. I don't like a lot of contemporary music. You guys know that. A lot of it I won't listen to. But that doesn't mean it's not biblical. It just means I don't like it. Some of it's not biblical, but not 99% of it. That is... That is false. They'll take a word out of 1 Corinthians. They'll take a word out of Ephesians. They'll take a word out of Revelation. They'll take a phrase out of Matthew. That sounds like one of his sermons. <laughs> it sounds like what he's doing right now. <laughs> out of That's Timothy, okay. out of 1 John, and preach for an hour and eight minutes we call about this something else. Time. And a phrase out of John, but they don't dig into the scripture. Right. Amen. What was that song we sang? I don't even remember what it is, but I can go ahead and mark her down. I bet it had biblical content. What'd y'all lead tonight? He touched me. I've never yeah. been sorry. Yeah. Go ahead and turn over that page number you had there. I've never been sorry. I've never been sorry. Praise the Lord. Read off the first verse, sir. Ever since Jesus saved his heart. Whoa, hold on. Yeah. What a beautiful name it is. Beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. Oh, it sounds so spiritual. Yeah. What a powerful name. Power to do what? Yeah. He knows it. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, what did it have power to do? Verse one. Saved and pardoned. Right. Who did it? The name of Jesus. They got that right. But he saved and he pardoned. It is a powerful name. But what's the Bible say? Anybody can say they got power, but power to do what? Pardon and save. Read the rest of it. I've been saved every day. I've never been sorry. Praise the Lord. 
And I trusted his blessed holy name. Yeah. Amen. The dark shadow. What a wonderful name it is. Wonderful name it is. Name what? A name I trusted in. A name I called on. A name that was given unto heaven. Even my being. Whereby we must be saved. Not just a name. But it's a name you call on. It's a name that's saved. It's a name that's got power. To pardon and forgive. Forgive, and I've never been sorry about that. So he's contrasting what a beautiful name, and I've never been sorry. <laughs> only he's only singing certain words out of yeah, what a beautiful name. So what a beautiful name starts off with you were the word at the beginning, which is quoting scripture, mm -hmm. John 1. One with God, the Lord most high. That's very doctrinal. <laughs> One with God, he's Jesus' deity. Your hidden glory and creation now revealed in you are Christ. Uh, in verse two, you, my sin was great. Your love was greater. He's, they, they're naming yeah. sin in contemporary songs. Come on. God's you have no greater. rivals. You have no yeah. equals. The bridge. Death could not hold you. So that's his crucifixion, his death, sa sacrificial death for us. The yeah. veil tore before you. You silenced the boasts of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring. The praise of your glory for you are raised to life again you have no rival you have no equal now mm. and forever god you reign yours is a kingdom yours is the power yours is the glory yours is the name above all names you can't compare these two songs mm -hmm. i've never been sorry is anemic when it comes to the gospel compared to what a beautiful name it is oh yeah well, and he sure does have it memorized though and here's the issue why can't we say they're both okay to sing? Sure. I like both of them. Why does it have? Well, I don't like I've never been sorry, only because, <laughs> you know, in every independent Baptist church that I ever attended, there's 430 altos and only a few sopranos. That's the and truth. So they would go, you know, I've never been sorry. And then all at once, praise the Lord. You know, all the altos <laughs> would just blow it out, man. But, you know, here's the thing. What he's actually admitting is he's not going to like the song that we sing in heaven in Revelation because it sounds a lot more like what a beautiful name it is yeah. than it does I've Never Been Sorry. Holy, holy, holy. There's some repeats right there. Not, yeah. to, not to mention hymns. When the role is called up yonder, when the role is called up yonder, yeah, when the role maybe, is called up yonder, when the role is called up yonder, I'll be there. Yeah. And then maybe, you know, <laughs> they ought to go back and read the Psalms. I think David in one of his songs got hung up on the phrase, his love endures forever. His over endures and over forever. and over. His love endures forever. So, you know, it's really sad that they don't like scriptural music. Yeah. Agreed. What's verse two say? All the day long I sing the story, praising him for his wondrous love. Uh, surely I know a home is waiting, beautiful home in heaven above. Yeah. Yeah. Verse three. Brightly the star of hope is shining, making my pathway brighter grow. Never a thought of sad repining, Jesus is with me, this I know. Yeah. I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. Amen. That's right. That's not what Scriptural content. No, it's not what it said. And scriptural content, I'll take what a beautiful name every single day over I've never been sorry. Well, every day I've been air pining. Come on, Nathan. It's hard to compete <laughs> with that. You've been air pining. Come on. I, okay, I admit it. I have I've been, been air pining air since this sermon started. <laughs> Yes, air 49 <laughs> minutes ago. I was done oh, with this. Boy. <laughs> yeah, I'm up on the song. I'm about air yeah. out. Yeah. Not just picking and choosing <laughs> words and phrases <laughs> and even a Bible verse and using just that verse. But I'm talking about content. What is the fruit that the contemporary is singing that the devil is behind? What is the fruit that it's producing? I'll tell you what it's producing. You can sit down. No biblical standards. Right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Cheating on your wife? You can sing. Go ahead. Yeah. 
drinking alcohol after the Christian concert. They, they can sing. They're talented. Got a big following. See them at the mall. Watch out now. See his wife at the mall. Stay over. That's right. Can I just go ahead and help y'all something? Come on, preacher. Can I help y'all something with your flesh? There ain't one thing wrong with losing weight. There's not one thing wrong with that. I'll give you a verse, though. Bodily exercise profiteth little. But rather exercising godliness. You show me somebody that's always worried about how they look. Mm-mm. That's good, preacher. Yeah, yeah, that's good. And I'll show you somebody that's this close <coughs> to cheating on their spouse. Uh, you're exactly right, right. right. Did y'all hear what I said? Yeah. Very few, Brother John, have I ever seen in my Christian ministry <laughs> that their wife loses a bunch of weight. Right. That it ain't too many years down the road, they're in the divorce court. Right. Y'all hear what I said? Yeah. I'm not saying everybody ought to be fat. There ain't no Bible for that. I'm fat. I'm not trying to defend myself. <laughs> Amen. I'm not trying to defend myself for being fat. But what I'm saying is, you better be careful. If you're married, worried about what everybody thinks you look like. <laughs> but you know what this contemporary crowd does? How much can they show? How tight can they get it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Sister Barbie, you come up here and see. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly right. Yeah. yeah. That's right. For the people listening, he's basically walking like a penguin, making fun of saying Becky Townsend can't walk to the stage because her dress is so tight. That's uncalled for. Totally uncalled for. Um, it's right. it's insulting. Yeah. Also sounds like there's a deeper problem if he's paying that much attention. Yes, it mm -hmm. does. Yes, sir. Yeah. Look like they're in a body bag. Yeah. That's happy. Right. right, yeah. No biblical standards. No holiness. Holy clothes don't count. One world church is the fruit it's producing. Well, the church. What'd you say, JC? Literally everybody on the stage that were men were wearing the exact same thing he's wearing. Yeah, suits and ties. What's how, uh, no biblical standards? This is not smart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so over this. <laughs> We've had to listen to it. <laughs> Thank you, Nathan. <laughs> You're welcome. Mr. Christ says the name of Jesus is powerful. The Pentecostal says the name of Jesus is powerful. The Baptists say the name of Jesus is powerful. We can sing that at any church. Go down the Church of Christ. See how many songs they're singing about being saved, born again. You know why? How do you spell born again? Born again. Born again. B-O-R-N-D-T. Yeah. Hey, by the way, you know the Church of Christ's favorite song, don't you? What is it? Yeah. Water fellowship, water joy divine. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible, Brian. Oh my goodness. Lord help Jesus. Jesus. Is that our good? favorite song is there's a new name written down in pencil. And <laughs> <laughs> I I don't have a dad joke to follow up with you guys. Oh, Sorry. <laughs> Identifies biblical practices, biblical doctrine. One world church is everybody's right. Whoa, 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 whoa. Come from all over. 
from every sea, from sea to shining sea. Everybody come to the conference, and, and we're going to sing songs. We're not just going to sing old time, because that might offend somebody. So we got to slip in some contemporary ones. we got to beat the drums. we got to have four piano players. we got to have seven electric guitar players. we got to have an old sister Barbie and old brother Ken. And we got to get up there and got to be conducive for everybody. we got to have a good personality. Everybody's got to love them. Did he drop his notes and forget where he is at? Because we're back like 20 minutes ago again. <laughs> I think so. I'll go ahead and go on record and say, mm. if they're old timey like they said they are, schedule Tony Hudson for next year's Arise Conference. Do you hear what I said? He's the one his answer machine says, may God bless and keep old time religion. If you say old timey, you know why? Because he's going to rip every song you sing, every dress you got on, every undoctrinal biblical stance that you're not taking and you are taking. And then he'll walk out to his car and turn on country music. <laughs> and say it's got the anointing. But, <laughs> but, you know, they could invite him because then they would know about using whole milk they would learn the deep truths of caffeinated coffee and how to sop a biscuit through gravy. I mean, you know, Hey, he could preach against driving Jeeps and having beards. Mm. Yeah, you know, that's really, that's important stuff right there. And you know, that would also help him keep food on my dad's table since he did that for over 10 oh, years. Yeah. Yeah. That's so hopefully they'll have him. Hopefully they'll have him. The only thing this guy hasn't hit on yet is wearing air Jordans with suit pants. I'm just waiting on that. <laughs> I love how every time after we say something, his whole crowd says amen to us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, glory. Bring oh, glory in. Uh oh. Bring oh, glory out of the woodwork. He ain't going to preach against nothing. That's how you have a camp meeting. Bring old glory out. Wave the American flag around on stage. <laughs> he gonna bust. He gonna bust hard. He gonna beat flesh down. So everybody come in. Everybody's right. It's okay. You know what their fruits are? Hatred toward Bible believing, Bible practicing churches. If I've ever gotten attacked, now they like to say, oh, you're attacking me. You're attacking me. Yeah, I'm attacking what you're doing and you're pushing publicly. Yeah. Yeah. I hope I do call. I gave out my number. Call. I'd love for that to happen. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not trying to be confrontational. I'm not trying. We're going. We're going to meet and fist fight and all that stuff. All I'm saying is, hey, go ahead and call. Amen. You did it publicly. Right. So you know what I got to do at 1703 Liberty Avenue in Lawrenceburg, Tennessee, at Lawrence County Baptist Church, that I've been preaching this book, ain't wavered, ain't sidetracked, and I said there's a right way to worship and a wrong way to worship. I've had to teach a series on Wednesday night to protect my young people from going down as the devil is contemporary way of worship. You got it publicly, so I'm calling you out publicly. Eating their own. Mm. His whole sermon has been why he is doing it right and why nobody else is yep. doing it right. Yeah. You know, Nathan, this is what I keep thinking, and I guess we've reached the end of this, but. Thank God. You wish. This is, <laughs> this is what I keep thinking. He is independent fundamental Baptist like they are independent fundamental Baptist. They are a part of the same entity. Yet what this is proving is, I guess, first of all, we need to welcome all of the guys from the Arise Conference to the RFP. I guess welcome. because on some level now they're recovering fundamentalists. 
according to him. <laughs> but I want to say this, and for anyone listening, to C.T. Townsend, to Cody Zorn, to any of the other guys that we could mention, the way you're feeling listening to him preach this is the way we feel when we see you associate with guys that preach against us, that mm. call us out from the pulpit, that use time in the pulpit to attack us. And then you have them at your meetings and you associate with them and you take pictures with them and you praise them. We believe the Bible just like you do. We believe the gospel just like you do. Yep. We believe in standards. We believe in honoring God. We believe in conservative values. Mm -hmm. We believe in biblical principles. We believe in all of those things. And yet, because we are not your brand of independent Baptist, we have been attacked repeatedly, called homosexuals, called uh, non-believers. You go right down the list. We've been called all of that. And you guys have been completely silent on it. So I just want to say to you how you feel listening to this is how we feel listening to all of that verbal garbage that's leveled against us. Yep. Great point, Brian. I'm in the perfect will of God right here. I don't give one rip if nobody calls me to come preach for them. And if I find out they was at that meeting, they ain't going to like what I preach no how. Amen. 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 Oh, anybody just brings up stuff like it all the time. They're insecure. They're just insecure. No, I'm fighting the good fight of faith. And it's a fight that I'm in. Hey, man, it's been a fight hey, since the day that I found out there's a right way to worship and a wrong way to worship. And I want to be like Paul. I finished my course. I fought a good fight. If that means fighting against friends, fighting against other Baptist churches or people I look up to, I got in this thing, made up my mind that I'm a soldier of the cross. I'm going to fight for. It's it's all about him. Yep. This guy's theme song is all my dreams are of me. <laughs> when I'm sleeping, <laughs> my face I see. Sorry. Well, he just did all... something pretty deceptive. He he made the argument now not about contemporary music. But he's a soldier fighting for the cross yeah. as yeah. if those men are against the cross of Christ. Yep. Yeah. It's disgusting. Really. And he's in the perfect will of God, but they're, they're wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The person that got in to fight, they don't care if you want to fight or don't want to fight. Right. Any of y'all ever went to public school? Yeah. 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 When somebody makes up their mind that they want to fight you, it don't matter if you don't want to fight or not. It's going to happen. And we're not talking about a physical altercation. We're talking about a spiritual fight. Hey man, it don't matter if you want to fight or you don't want to fight. There's a fight that's going on. And a fight has already been planned on this church. And I plan on fighting for it. There's a fight in our children's life. I plan on fighting for it. There's a fight preaching are going through. I plan on standing with them and fighting. And it's only three of us. Hey man. I'm talking I'm honest. I can't wait for heaven. Amen. Where this devilish contemporary music and the pushers of it can go back to the pits of hell where they came from. Amen. 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 How do we know? The devil's behind the contemporary song. Well, you know by the spirit of it. Amen. We don't dictate it by the word of it, right. by the beat of it, by who sings it, the group that come up with it. No, we try the spirit. Yeah. Right. 
Yeah, and if the spirit is foreign yeah. and God saved you yeah. and changed you and the spirit lives on the inside of you and it don't bear witness with what lives in there, yeah. it's wrong. Right. That's right. If all it is is fleshly, yeah. sensual, yeah. mystical, yeah. enticing, yeah. seducing, yeah. You know what? It ain't the Spirit of God. Right. That's right. Amen. Let's check the fruits on it. Yeah. Amen. Let's check the fruits on it. Right. What's it producing? Yeah. Right. Good. True. What's it producing? Yeah. Yeah. What's producing that singing? Right. Most of these big name artists and groups that you see sing and that we, we listen to, yes. if you called the church that they said they was a member of, I wonder how long it's been since they've even heard from them. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. right. I wonder how many times a tithe check's come in. Right. Oh, I, I, I tithe to my ministry. You bring your tithe into the storehouse. Right. That's the local church. Right. Not give it to your ministry. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. Right. Oh, we had to put diesel in the bus. We just tied to that. Unbiblical practices yeah. is what the fruit is. Right. right. True. Nothing but fleshly people no change. Right. Matter of fact, this devilish contemporary music, they may have a lot of people that come to an altar and call out on the name of God, but it ain't got enough spirit in it to change them into a new creature. Right. So people can't be saved out of any other version besides the King James Version, and people can't be saved if they're listening to Contemporary Christian music. You just spent yes. an hour and eight minutes, and I don't think anybody's going to get saved after that message. Well, I will say this. You have to give him credit for one thing. This is an eisegetical masterpiece. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. True. Yeah. He's yeah, a writing in there, too. It's a disaster. I wonder how many famous artists he knows who actually don't pay their tithes and who don't show up at church. He keeps throwing these accusations out there. That's called slander. Yeah. He might, he might ought to research casting crowns who? and how they actually make sure that they're back at their local church yeah. every weekend and how many Chris other... McClarney. Yes. Leads worship at his church. There. Yes. Yeah. What's this guy's name, by the way, Gavin flat. Oh, okay. I think. I, I was assuming he's pretty big. I've never heard of him. Can we? Mm. Can we have we, to listen to the rest? Can we be at the end? I think we're done. Yeah, let's let's. I think he says something else real bit. We're we're practically done with it. Because, <laughs> hey, you come down the altar. And what a wonderful name! Yeah. 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 He loves and you song. can leave, and you know, because everybody's just universal. It's a universal song, right? Yeah. And you know, it's it's just the name of Jesus. It ain't. Holiness. It ain't conviction. Right. It ain't don't do that no more. He's saying the power is in personal convictions, not in the name of Jesus. Well, That's... he's actually saying worse than that because earlier, Nathan, you read the gospel is in the song, What yeah. a Beautiful Name It Is. Yeah. So what he's actually saying is the gospel is not sufficient for salvation. You got to be singing the right kind of music, having the right kind of Bible version. What did he just say that the song is universal? What, what did he just say? Something. Yeah. Don't please, for the love of God, don't rewind it. But he said something <laughs> like it's for everyone. But that's the gospel is for everyone. Yeah. Jesus is one with God. You can't say that except by the Spirit of God. That's what the text he read at the beginning says. 
He forgot he read that. Right. Don't go there no more. Right. Don't hang out with that no more. Right. Don't listen to that no more. It's just everybody. Just you know, just the whole world. We're all God's children. Yeah, sure. No, we ain't all God's children. Right. And the longer I live, the less I really believe that are truly God's children. Right. Amen. I've heard that verse my whole life, quoted that verse my whole life. Broad is the way, wide is the gate that leadeth to destruction. Many there be that find it, or many there be that go in thereat. Straight is the way, and narrow is the gate, or narrow is the way, and straight is the gate. Figure it out. Just few find that path. Right. One of the greatest messages I ever heard was five truths about eternity. And one of those points was there's more people going to hell than going to heaven. That is a biblical truth. Right. It's the greatest message. You What's the fruit of it? What's the fruit of the song you like and listen to? Yeah. What does it produce in you? Right. Right. I got to get off it. I'm about to preach another hour on that. But when you listen to that song, what does it produce in your life? Right. That's right. Whoa, 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 whoa. There's air to Yeah. 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 What's it producing? Right. That's why we preach against worldly rock music, rap music, because all it produces is wickedness. Yeah. Right. You want to be that. Yeah. Right. You want to live that song out. Right. Yeah. Well, we better be careful what they call Christian music. Right. If it ain't producing godly fruit. Right. That's right. That's right. Yes. I don't care who who twangs it and who sings it. <laughs> right. And who fames it. Right. <laughs> But if it ain't producing holy living, yeah. Yeah. a spirit that stirs on the inside of you produces godly fruit. Yeah. Right. You know, this is funny. Well, it ain't really funny to me. When I first sold my life out to God, I got saved at 14. Then get saved in the right church. I thank God they had a King James Bible. I thank God that the Spirit was moving, especially on the preach, first preacher I ever heard in my life preached on hell and had the Holy Ghost power on him. Amen. And it convicted me that I was lost. Yeah. Well, we was in kind of a it was kind of a dead church. Didn't really sell out to God. Were you gonna say something, JC? No, I was yawning. Sorry. Oh, okay. Well so he just said he got saved in the wrong kind of church. And then now he left it and found the right kind of church, I guess, the IFB. Don't, don't people come after us all the time saying we left the ones that got us saved? We walked away from the IFB, the mm -hmm. ones that, that told us about the Lord. And I've heard this guy and a lot of other guys say they got saved in a Southern Baptist church or Pentecostal church or whatever, and then ended up finding the IFB. This it's just a double standard. Arise used the King James, by the way. It was said from the state. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they did multiple times but he doesn't think they really believe it i saved that's why i preach you can be saved but not sold out right that's right but when i got sold out to god i took all of them box cd sets i had yeah god said george nah. hank no no Leonard, no, no, no. Vern? I said, oh, God, not Vern. I mean, I give up Hank Jr. Vern Gosden? Conway? Waylon? <laughs> My wife had to throw out her vanilla ice. <laughs> I said, no. Yeah. You know how much money? Yeah. I said, I'll just give it to one of my friends. God said, nah, if it ain't good for you, it ain't good for nobody else. Right.
did, do you think we really had a conversation with God? Was God revealing extra biblical revelation to him? No. Well, Welcome. I mean, this just makes me miss my Garth Brooks album. Uh, yeah. He yeah. just quoted. Are he just stopping? quoted God. He just quoted God as saying, "Eh." <laughs> what verse was that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and God the God said. of heaven said, "Eh." Yeah. 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 Right. Chiseled in stone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That dinosaur went to the burn barrel. <laughs> that country boy didn't survive. Now <laughs> I said, God, what kind of music am I supposed to listen to? Yeah. You know, I went down to the Salt and Pepper Christian bookstore. Now they, honestly, Christian bookstores, you better be careful. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Amen. I believe the devil owns 99% of them. Hey, Amen. You find your King James Bible looks like this magnifying glass. If they ask which Bible, well, come in and I'll show you which one. But they ain't hardly any good music. And God, you know what God led me to? Vestal Goodman. The Goodmans. I mean, the most godliest songs in that whole Christian bookstore. Say what, Brian? What was that? They're Pentecostal. They're Pentecostal. Are they really? 100%. Yes. That's <laughs> hilarious. Oh, my word. Oh. That, I'm so glad you said that. I had no idea. Yep. I wore that thing out. <laughs> God walks the dark hills. The highways and bobbins just riding the road is crying. Make me want to get godly. Yeah. Makes me want to shout. Yeah, right. Amen. Makes me want to soul win. Yeah. Makes me want to tell somebody else. Yeah. Amen. If you're going through a valley, I got a God. Amen. He's the same God in the valley as it is on the mountain. God. Amen. Prayer. Yeah. Wants to make me pray. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Makes me want to be thankful for somebody else that prayed. Yeah. Amen. Somebody pray, prayed me out of harm's way. I'm like, man, thank God for all the people who's prayed for me. Leads me to them things. Amen. But a devilish contemporary Christian song don't lead you to them things. It leads you to a spontaneous movement. But no fruit that lasts. Right. No fruit that lasts. Let's all stand. Heavenly Father, thank you for this night. Thank you for hmm. thank you for this sermon being over. Man, have y'all ever heard the? Uh, there's a there's a really great movie out called Billy Madison. You ever seen I don't that think movie? I have. Madison? No. There's a line in there that just really feels like it fits for this. It, it says, you know. What's that guy's name that we just listened to for an hour and eight minutes? Gavin Flat. Flat. Mr. Flat, what you've just said is one of the most idiotic things I've ever heard. <laughs> At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could possibly be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this podcast is now dumber for having listened to it. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. <laughs> what in the world? <laughs> Oh man. Oh man. That was exhausting. So he made his whole sermon driving home these points basically on the fact of a twisted out of context Bible verse, two passages, and and the fact that Pentecostals are so bad that anything that's touched them can't be gospel. And then he ends with an illustration about him listening to a Pentecostal group. <laughs> You gotta love it. You, do you think maybe the the spirit in him would have said that's not right based on what he just preached? I mean, according to he's in the perfect will of God. If he's listening to a Pentecostal, that should have thrown up more red flags in Panama City during a hurricane, but it didn't. Yeah. yeah. That's we hard. wanted to do this. We wanted to do this for a couple of reasons. One reason is that 
we feel like what he said about CT Townsend and the Rise Conference and the other guys that were there is wrong. And uh, even though we're not really on the same page with them about some stuff, we're on the same team. We're Christians. We're believers in God. So we wanted to stand up for them. But we also wanted to put on full display why we have this podcast. Yeah. That is legalism. He's adding to legalists rules. And so a lot of people are saying, well, you paint with a broad brush. Well, you know, (laughs) we're not saying everybody's like that, but here we go. We've got people eating their own, shooting their wounded. And, you know, I don't, I don't mind standing side by side with CT Townsend against that kind of junk because, you know, whether he takes up for us or what people in to preach that yeah do exactly it, what that guy just did exactly about us it, it that doesn't matter what matters is the truth and what we just heard was not, not the truth it was twisting scripture and um you know you said at the beginning jc this might be one of the most controversial episodes we've ever had because uh there are a lot of ct townsend fans out there there are a lot of burlington revival converts there are a lot of uh people who've been saved under his ministry and and like his singing i i heard him him and becky he and becky were singing on the radio and in greenville the other day and uh so he and becky actually recorded a song that i wrote i believe that's awesome so i think what this proves is the infighting and fundamentalism you know we we've talked about how that they've come after us but the truth is we all know they've been coming for each other for years. And we all sat under that. We experienced that the different camps declaring war with one another. Um, Most independent Baptist churches, the result of splits rather than planting. So what we're saying is true. And now our listeners have had the unfortunate privilege of hearing this. Yep. Well, I don't know any other way to end this, but to say, come to the Recovering Fundamentalist podcast for the sake of the gospel conference, and you will not hear any preaching anywhere similar to that. We will actually preach the Bible in context, and we will be singing some good hymns and some good contemporary Christian songs worshiping Jesus. And I think also... If you hear garbage like this, even if it is in your camp, call it out. Yeah. Yeah. Be courageous. Don't just ignore the tweets asking you questions. Um, I'm exhausted. Yeah. That, that was out. That was, you know, this might be one of the most melancholy closes we've ever had <laughs> to a podcast. Well, it is 1230 at night too. <laughs> it is yes. very late. But that was so draining. It just was. <laughs> it really is. I need a shower, maybe a <laughs> big turkey sandwich. and. Well, you know, I'll say this. We did this this one time. If we never do that again <laughs> for the rest of our lives, okay. I promise I won't complain. It may be a while or <laughs> maybe never. But, hey, guys, I'm glad to be back. This was awesome. It, it's had- good talking to you. It's good hanging out for a couple hours. I really have missed y'all. I I missed you too. I think it was like two and a half weeks, and I never even talked to you. I know that's crazy. I didn't even know your back was hurt, so I'm glad you're. Yeah, I've been better soon. I've been camping out in the bed, so everybody, everybody, make sure and pray for me. I'll be going to the neurosurgeon tomorrow, and we'll find out the right course of action. Come and see us in Danville, Virginia, November third and fourth, for the sake of the gospel conference recoveringfundamentalist.org get your tickets we'd love to just hang out in some real community and here's an incredible thought also the rfp network's going to be there and those are some deep theological loving jesus truth over preference people and uh man i'm excited to be there boys yes sir let's go home go to bed it's good to be back we jumped right into the thick of it right here at the very first one yes we did (laughs) yes we did all right well y'all have a good week be sweet peace 
Thanks for listening to the Recovering Fundamentalist podcast. Be sure to stop by our social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Give us a follow. Also, go to our website, recoveringfundamentalist.org. That's recoveringfundamentalist.org. There you can find Recovering Fundamentalist swag. You can get your t-shirts and hats. You can join our ex-fundy community. See where we're going to be having some meetups. It's the recoveringfundamentalist.org. Be sure to join us next time for the Recovering Fundamentalist podcast.